What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Rolo88, coming at you live and in the flesh. Uh, today, I woke up, and I had a very intense pain in my chest. Uh, it was like on the right side of my chest right here. It felt like a sumo wrestler or an elephant was just sitting on me, just crushing me. Um, I felt a really, really intense, overwhelming pain. Um... And I'm thinking it's because of the other night when I had gotten into an argument with my girlfriend and had to walk home. I walked all the way across Tulsa, and I was, like, going insane, and it was rough. It was rough. I'm just, okay, it was rough. But <clears throat> I want to be with this girl. And it's difficult because I feel that there's no love being sent from her to me. She could say, I love you, but I can detect that she doesn't mean it. And then I fall back into my old routines of looking at porn, being just basically a reprehensible human being that I don't want to be. Um, I don't want to objectify women. I don't want to do all of that. I don't want to. And yet I'm so good at it. You know what I mean? It's like an addiction. It really is, um, if I'm being honest. And I want to be with this girl. I really do. Um, when when I first met, I'm like, you know, this is a person I could really get to love. I didn't love her right away. I'm going to be honest about that. But I knew that eventually we could be deeply in love. Like my parents, who've been together almost, I think, like 40 years or something. Or... I don't know, don't quote me on anything, but 37 years, I think, was there, I don't know. My great-grandparents were together over 50 years, and then my great-grandpa died, who was a World War II veteran. Anyways, I was physically ill this morning, because I couldn't, I, I just wasn't feeling the love and care, and I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know. I feel like the roles have been reversed, where women used to be all serious, and, uh, you know, all this other stuff. Now men are all serious and getting offended easier, because, yeah, things have taken a turn for the worse, I think. Um, and maybe that's just women letting men have a taste of their own medicine. I don't know. But the thing is, as men, we need women, and as women, you need men. That's indisputable. Um... That will always be that way. Um, I don't know. This is, you know, mature spoiler warning, but there was a South Park episode recently where uh, Cartman went to Mars, and the women ran Mars, and the men were downstairs getting milked for their sperm and writing jokes for the women uh, because that was their task. They were forced to just write jokes for the women because apparently women don't have a sense of humor. And they can't lighten up, and they can't just let social issues be, and everything else. And, ah, you know what I mean? But, anyways, the point is, I was physically ill. I don't know how to deal with this woman. I know what love is. You guys, you know that I know what love is. And I know how to be caring. And I know how to look after someone. Make sure that people are safe. I know how to be a caring person who is just there for you. And nobody's been there for me. And sometimes I feel like, you know, my own sister, my own parents, they're not there for me. And that sucks. And this is like my own therapy, I guess. Um, they are there for me, though. They do support me. I just feel like if I can't get support from my peers, people who are my age that that's when I truly begin to suffer. Um, and that's when I get the mental health issues. And that's when everything else falls apart. And that's when I get physically ill like this. My chest starts to hurt. I get weaker. I lose energy. I get depressed. I fall basically apart. I fall to pieces. And my mom used to say that I would tell her, yeah, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. And that's what I used to say. And I was strong. But you can't be strong forever. Eventually that wears down. Eventually you need help. 
eventually, yeah, you're not going to be able to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You have to pass that weight around to other people, and we can all hold the world up together. That's how I really feel, because you can't do it all on your own. Um, you can try, you can manage what you can, but you can't do it all on your own. It's impossible. So I just needed, you know, her help to help me lift up uh, my weight of the world. And I feel like she wasn't doing it. And then I feel like it crushed me or something. Like physically, literally crushed me. And I don't know. It's just, um, I don't know. It sucks. I've always said it's like being between a rock and a hard place with her. Because the rock is her, uh, is, is me in my love for her. It's like a rock, and I don't want to ever let it go. The hard place is that I can't pass through to get to where she loves me. So it's just a rock pressing up against a hard place, and it doesn't ever change, and it's the same day after day, and you don't know mental health issues until you've dealt with this woman. <sighs> and that's just what relationships are, kids. <laughs> oh, God. So, I don't know. This is my longest relationship, if you couldn't tell. I refused to date anyone while I was in the military because, I mean, with deployments and everything, you're putting your life at risk. And I wasn't about to do that. I wasn't about to put my life at risk and then maybe not come home and then, you know, say I was engaged or married to someone or just dating someone even. And I went overseas and got killed. How would that look for her? She's like, Where's my baby, you know? He died in combat or something. So I refused to date when I was in the military. And you guys can say what you will about that. But anyways, I don't know. I know this is getting really personal, but I don't care. I like it when things are personal. I like to make people uncomfortable. I like to take you out of your comfort zone and put you in mine because that's what I do. Um, for a long time, I've thought I had Asperger's. Um, I still do. I need help socially. I can't look people in the eyes a lot of the times. I feel awkward a lot of places, all right? And it's it scares me. And that's pretty much my day-to-day -day life. And, yeah, I'm really poorly adjusted to a lot of places. And But I, I manage. I manage. Somehow I do it. I don't know. I'm just like everyone else. We all have anxiety. We all have fears. And we don't make it any easier on ourselves when we don't acknowledge those things. I want a long, happy life. I want to grow old with this woman. With this beautiful lady. <laughs> but it's hard. I've had my issues. I've made bad decisions. I've made good decisions. I've been an architect. I've been a project manager. Well, I haven't been a project manager. I've studied to be a project manager. I've done cocaine. I've smoked weed. I've There's a million things I could tell you. And, you know, just the fact is life is, life is just an occurrence. Life is something that happens to you. Um... Maya Angelou, she was a very famous black author. She wrote this book called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, about how even when we're in our darkest moment, even when we feel trapped, we can still, you know, we can still sing, we can still whistle, we can still have a good time, because that's just the way it is. She, actually, I believe she had some ancestral, like, family issues or something. And so she was definitely a victim of some sexual um, harassment or something like that. And she was, actually, I think she took a job as a stripper at one point. I don't really know. But the fact is, she overcame all that adversity and just took it in stride and used it to gain life experience, not always in a positive way, but she knew that living and pushing through and being able to deal with the hard stuff was a part of life. And I think that's really important to know, especially in today's world.